again. Good morning. Amen. Let's open up in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, glorify your name. We thank you. We ask, dear God, dear God, that you would be with us as we hear your word today. I pray that, that the word, as it goes forth, will go forth with simplicity and clarity, dear God. I pray that we will be helped. I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that we will be uplifted and encouraged, dear God. I pray that as we apply the word to our hearts, dear Heavenly Father, that we would be able to be better, dear God, and not bitter. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 So this is a part three of a message entitled Acknowledge the Lord. So we have been uh, talking about that. Uh, we're going to look again at David as our example of what can happen when you acknowledge the Lord. What can happen when you acknowledge the Lord. Uh, but let's let's start with um, the verse that kind of kicked kicked this off for us. Um, very familiar verse, Proverbs, the third chapter, verses five and six. Now, if it, we we should all have this memorized by now, right? Because we have been looking at this verse for the last several several weeks. Uh, but it reads: Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Again, this is, this is familiar, um, a familiar verse. And, and though Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, is a, it's a fan favorite among the verses that we can easily recall and recite, I'll be the first to admit that it's difficult sometimes to apply this verse to my life. Um, because it can be difficult. It can be. It can be difficult to trust God in difficult situations. It can be a challenge to trust Him when we're facing difficult situations. Uh, when things are falling apart, we're tempted to give up. We're tempted to kind of throw in the towel and... and um, and but but it's during those times that we have to look at the four principles that are outlined in this particular verse and and live them out and, and apply them to our lives. Uh, the first part, the first principle we talked about, it simply says to uh, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Uh, remember that it's God that we trust in. We don't have we, we, we don't trust in anybody else or anything else. It's God that we trust in. So when you're going through a situation, you have to remember, first of all, to trust in the Lord. And then that second principle that we find in this particular verse is don't rely on your own understanding. Too many times we try to handle the situation on our own. We try to uh, uh, do our own thing. We think that we have all the answers. And guess what? You may have some of the answers, but you don't have all of them. Not all the time. And as we're going to see uh, in, in, this, in the lesson from David, sometimes the Lord may have you do something or say something or go somewhere that's not logical. And so we can't, we, we, th th this principle tells us not to rely on our own understanding. We have to go to God first. We have to get it from him. We have to get our instructions from him. Uh, and then... Uh, the, the, the third part, the third statement in this particular verse says to acknowledge God. That's what we've been talking about. You go to God first. You, to acknowledge God means to know him, to have a relationship with him. Too many times uh, uh, we don't develop an ear to hear God. We don't develop our relationship with him. And so we not, we're not sure if he's speaking. We're not sure that we even hear the voice of the Holy Spirit because there's two primary ways that, that God speaks, three primary ways that God speaks through us. The first way is through his word. So if you're not reading his word, then you, you're not going to, you, you, you may miss a lot of things because the primary way that he speaks, he speaks through us is through his word. We got to be in our word. He speaks through us through his Holy Spirit. I say this all the time, the same Holy Spirit that speaks to me 
is the same Holy Spirit that speaks to you. If you are a believer in Jesus, if you have accepted him as your Lord and Savior, the thing that happened when you got saved is the Holy Spirit began to take residence in your life, in your heart. He speaks to you. You just got to be able to hear him. And then the third way that God speaks through, uh, to us is through godly people. Through godly people. I'm not discounting that God doesn't speak to uh, through other people in our lives. But you got to know these are, these are godly people. We talked about this last week. You can't just accept everything from everybody. Because some people will talk to you and give you answers based on their experience, uh, based on their circumstances, based on uh, uh, what they've been through. And sometimes uh, what they've been through caused them to be bitter. And so they're giving you an answer based on, uh, drawn from their bitterness. That's how come you have to have the Holy Spirit. You got to be in your word so that you can decipher between the, between the fluff. And hear God. But we have to acknowledge him. To acknowledge him means that you know him. You have a relationship with him. And then finally, once we trust in the Lord, we don't rely on our own uh, understanding. We acknowledge him. Then the promise is that God will direct you. He'll let you know what you need to do. He'll be that guide that tells you where you should go, what you should say. That's 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 the, the, those four things in this particular verse. It's something that we all have to begin to live by in our everyday lives. Because there's a lot of things that are happening in, uh, 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 to us that make it difficult. Let's be honest. Life can be hard. Life can be hard. I, 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 I will do a disservice to us all to sit here and tell you that everything is going to be uh, roses. I, I, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be doing my job as a minister as your pastor to, if, if I don't let you know that and, and, and recognize and acknowledge the fact that life can be hard. You will go through some things again. I want to get ahead of myself. We were, I, I'm going to show you. We're about to see this in the example from David. You are going to go through some things and life can be challenging. And so we have to understand these principles. We have to live Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. It can't just be a bumper sticker or our, our, our favorite verse that we can recite to, 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 to let everybody know that you got some word. That's not why. No, we got to live it. You got to trust God. You got to lean not to your own understanding. You have to acknowledge him. And know that he promises that he will direct your path. One more thing about the path. The path may be rocky. The path may be rocky. But, that, but, but if God tells you to go down that path, even though it's a rocky path, it's not the wrong path. It's a challenging path, but that doesn't mean it's the wrong path. See, this is how come... We have to have everything working. We have to be able to recognize the voice of the Holy Spirit. We have to know that God is speaking to us because just, just, just let's take a quick example where you're driving. You're driving and you're going your regular way, your regular route home. But then something in you tells you to go left when you normally would have gone right. And then you look left and left looks like it's just, it's like a dark, just, you know, just imagine with me. It's just like a dark out, right? It, it, but, but you heard, you heard in you to go left. That's what you heard in you. And, and, and if you don't know and acknowledge and understand and can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, you will talk yourself out of going down the challenging road, even though the challenging road is the right road for you. You'll go right. But in this case, right is wrong. Because it's not what God told you to do. It's not what God told you to do. 
So we gotta we gotta know him. We gotta understand him. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. He will direct your path. Second Samuel. Second Samuel, the fifth chapter, records when David went into battle with the Philistine army on two separate occasions. Last week we looked at the first battle. Um, and that was found in verses 17 and, uh, through 20. And we realized from those verses, from those uh, few verses, we realized, first of all, that our enemy is coming. Right? Our enemy is coming. Um, as soon as David, if you have an opportunity to read those verses uh, in, your, in your, uh, your, your private time, 2 Samuel 5th chapter, verses 17, 17 through 20, but as soon as David acknowledged publicly, was acknowledged publicly as the king of all of Israel, as soon as that happened, the Bible says that the Philistine army mobilized their, their, their forces and went to attack him. Now get the parallel, get the principle, because as soon as you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you acknowledge him as such, the enemy is going to mobilize and, 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 and attack you. He's going to attack you. That's the parallel, right? That's the application of that. As soon as you acknowledge Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you, you, you're, on, you're on Satan's hit list. Sorry if nobody ever told you that, but that's the reality of it. You, you are on his hit list. Um, and so David's example taught us that before we do anything, before we go into the battle, before we confront that crazy co-worker, before we make any confrontational call, before we, we do anything, we should consult God. We should consult God. Remember from, from last week, the Bible says, and this was found in, in, in uh, verse 19, the Bible says that David inquired of the Lord. Now, he heard that the enemy was coming. Because the enemy's coming. I'm telling you that the enemy's coming. And so when the enemy, when he heard that the enemy was coming, he inquired of the Lord. He's like, well, uh, you tell me, you tell me, God, what do you want me to do? Should I attack? Or what? You tell me. So he inquired of the Lord. That's an acknowledgement of God. That's what we've been talking about. We have to acknowledge God. Stop handling your problems by yourself without going to the greatest problem solver that, that, that you can go to. You don't have to handle everything by yourself. It's challenging. It's hard. Yes, I understand that, but you don't have to do it by yourself. I wish I would have understood that and recognized that and acknowledged that in my in my younger years, if I could go back and tell my younger self, younger self, uh, uh, quit fretting over all this stuff, quit worrying about all this. Listen, ninety five percent of the stuff. I'm just talking about me because I don't want y'all to be like he he talking about me. Ninety five percent of the stuff that I worried about as my younger self never happened. Never happened. That's a high percentage. Ninety-five percent of the stuff that I that I worry about, uh, Rita would always, you know, I would, was was having challenges on my uh, on my job, and just just some crazy stuff was happening. I I would wake up at three o'clock in the morning. Just this was every day. I didn't, no, I'm I'm not making this up. Three o'clock every day I would wake up. Just dreading the fact that I had to go into work. I, I, you know, that's that's one of the reasons why I try to I try to do my part to make it as pleasant as, as possible for the people that I work with. Amen. Because that's that's not a fun place to be. That is not a fun place to be where you're you're just you're 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 stressed out and you're frustrated about going to work and all the things that you might encounter. Get what I said, you might encounter it. And so, you know, as me and Rita was, was praying and working through all the challenges that I had on my job, she, her, I feel like her job was to constantly, constantly remind me 
that this stuff that I'm worrying about, it, 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 is not, it might not happen. And guess what? As I looked it over, and, and as, I, as I was, uh, uh, when I reflect back, those things that I stressed over and I worried about, 95% of them did not happen. I just was stressed over it, and, and, and in, that, in that stress, in that stress, I, 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 I worked my nerves up, and, and I probably lost weight. I probably could have, I, that's fine to be able to lose weight. I'm not complaining about that part of it, but I lost weight. I, I, I was stressed out. You know, but if I could tell my younger self, to go to God, cast all your cares onto him because the Bible says that he cares for you. And I can tell my younger self, don't just know that verse, but live it. Then it would have been so much better for you. you know, we got a lot of people that can be a witness to that. It would, be, it would have been a lot better for me. And then we found out last week in verses 20, after David got the victory, after he got the victory, the Bible says that he gave God credit. He gave God credit for, uh, uh, for, for the victory. He, he, he said the Lord did it. The Lord did it. Um, that that kind of reminds me of, uh, of Psalms 115 verses 1. It says, not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name goes all the glory for your unfailing love and faithfulness. When you experience the victory, big or small in your life, do not forget to give God the glory, give him the credit for his unfailing love and for his faithfulness towards you. Don't forget to give him the credit. He, he, he's, he's worthy of, of all of the credit. Now, let's pick up reading. I want to look at the second uh, battle that David uh, went through. So um, 2 Samuel verses, chapter 5 verses, I'm going to read 22 and, and 25, and I'm going to say a few things about that, and then we'll be finished. Verse 22 says, but after a while the, Philistine, the Philistines returned and again spread, across, spread out across the valley of Rephraim. And again, David asked the Lord what to do. Do not attack them straight on, the Lord replied. Instead, circle around behind and attack them near the poplar trees. When you hear a sound like marching feet in the tops of the poplar trees, the poplar trees uh, be on the alert. That will be the signal that the Lord is moving ahead of you to strike down the Philistine army. So David did what the Lord commanded, and he struck down the Philistines all the way from Gibeon to Gezer. So there's a couple of things that I want to point out in this particular, uh, in these verses. Um, the first thing I, I, I want to say is the enemy is coming back. The enemy is coming back. Last week, the enemy came, right? Because David was acknowledged the king, and then the, the, the Bible says the Philistine army, they came and, and, and they wanted to attack him, right? And he and he he fought against him and he got the victory. He got the he he won that particular battle. But here we see that the enemy came back. Look at what the what it says in the first part of uh, verses uh, uh, twenty-two. It says, "But after a while, the Philistines returned. They came back. Listen, when the, the reason why I'm pointing this out to us is because you cannot let up ever." You cannot let up. You get the victory in your life. God allows you to, allows you to experience victory over your enemies. He, he blesses you. He makes a way. He opens a door that, that, that people were shedding in your life. Guess what? Praise God. Give God credit for it. Declare that the Lord did it. But get ready for the next attack. See, this is what happens a lot of times is... is we 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 uh, keep we keep riding on the high of our previous victory. We keep riding on that high, and we're we're excited about it, and definitely be excited about it. Praise God, worship God, definitely do that. 
But I need you to understand that after a little while, after a while, the enemy is going to return. The enemy is going to come back. He's going to return. And so we, 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 we need to, to, to remember that we may not know when he's coming, but the enemy is coming. Another familiar verse. Second Peter uh, 5 verses 8 and the first part of verse 9 says this. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. The Bible calls him a great enemy. He's a formidable foe. It's not nothing to sneeze at. You know, these little caricatures of the devil with the pitchfork and the horn. That that's it, he he's pleased for you to think of him that way. Like a cartoon character. He wants you to think of him that way. Because if you think about the devil as a cartoon character, then you won't realize how, how formidable he is. And you won't stay prayed up because you just think you're going in, into the battle with the cartoon character that you can just flick away and you know, he's gone. He's pleased for you for us to, to be thinking about him like that. But the Bible says that he's a great enemy with a lot of resources. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Then the Bible says to stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Don't, don't, you don't let up because he's not going to let up. Be strong in your faith. Stand firm because he's not going to let up. All right, next. First thing, the enemy is coming again. The next thing I want to point out from David's example is that you have to acknowledge God again. See, this is, you can't, you can't, you can't uh, say, well, I prayed about it and I acknowledge God. God gave me the victory and, and that's it. You may have to acknowledge him again. I have no idea what that is. A distraction. That's what that is. That's a distraction. So everybody stay focused. All right. Uh, you have to acknowledge God again. Look at what look at what the Bible says. This is I'm just I'm just pulling out examples from from David in these two particular battles that we see uh, where David fought against the Philistines. It says, and again David asked the Lord what to do. And again. David asked the Lord what to do. And again, David acknowledged him. And again, David inquired of the Lord. And again, David said, okay, I know you got the, you, you gave me the, the victory from this last battle, but here I am again. I'm about to go in it again. So, Lord, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? We, 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 this, this, is a, this is important to me because just like you can, you can fly high, on previous victories, you can kind of let your guard down a little bit. Sometimes, uh, uh, because we're going into a familiar battle, we feel like we don't have to inquire of the Lord. Because you're like, okay, I've done this before. I've, I've got this. I know. I, I know how to handle this. The Philistines, they coming again. I know how to I know how to take care of them because I took it. You know, God helped me to take care of them last time. So I know I know what to do. I know how to handle them. And so we don't inquire of the Lord. But you I, I, you'll see in a, in a minute that that can be a mistake. We always need to inquire of the Lord, no matter what we're doing. Recognize God in every situation. Even if it's a familiar situation, a familiar challenge that you have to deal with, recognize God in it. Recognize him in it, in this particular situation, in whatever situation that you're, you're dealing with. Uh, David did not allow himself to be overconfident and skip the most important part of inquiry of the Lord. He was not going to be overconfident because he 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 ripped the the Philistines uh, 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 previously. He wasn't going to be overconfident. No, he's like, look, my help comes from the Lord, so I'm going to look to the hills from which cometh my help. I, I I cannot be overconfident. I have to go to God. 
Let me say it. Let me say it the way that that that, that uh, uh, the old folks used to say it in the church I grew up in. They said you 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 got to stay prayed up. Amen. <laughs> you got to stay prayed up. You can't be overconfident ever. Ever. There's a, there's a verse in uh, a principle found in the new the uh, the New Testament where Paul talks about we have no confidence in the flesh. You can't have you can't you can't have confidence in yourself. That's you know what that is. You know what that is. Lean not to your own understanding. That's what that is. It's lean, it's lean not to your own understanding. Do not have confidence in your flesh so that you'll be overconfident when you're dealing with the familiar challenge. You, you can't. You have to be prayed up even when the battlefield is familiar. And here's why. Here's why. Let's keep reading. Do not attack them straight on, the Lord replied. Instead, circle around behind and attack them and, and attack the rear attack them near the poplar trees so look at what he says here he says do not attack them straight on do not attack them straight on so the last battle that's, that's, that's exactly the instructions that was the instructions for the last battle. Remember the last battle, he just, he, he just, God said, yeah, go attack them. And so David and his army, the Bible says that they went through the Philistine, they struck them like a, like a raging uh, a river that just, just went through them. That was the last instructions. But that wasn't God's plan this time. You see why we have to acknowledge him in everything, in every situation? Because the last time, he, he, he went straight through them. But God says, no, not this time. This time, instead, circle behind them. Instead of bum-rushing them this time, we're going to set an ambush for them. I don't know why God did that. It's not my prerogative to, to question why God did it. It could be that the Philistine army, they went, they studied the battle that they lost in. They, 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 uh, they, they studied what happened and what was going on, and they determined that, hey, we need to have this particular strategy when we go up against David again. So maybe their strategy changed. And so God, who knows all, was like, you know what? Don't do it the same way that you did it last time. Switch it up. And listen, God may tell you to do something different that, that, uh, that you may not think is logical. David was a military strategist, a brilliant warrior and a, and a brilliant military strategist who knew how to fight a battle. What if David said, well, God... I don't think that's the best way to do it. I think the best way to do it is to do it the same way we did it last time, because last time we 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 just routed them. We we had them running. Why don't we just do it the same way that we did it last time? And if David wanted to, to lean on his own understanding of the situation, and he went and he did it the way that he wanted to do it. If he wanted to do it that way, and he did not trust God, then he would have been doing the wrong plan. And when we do the wrong plan, because we lean on our own understanding, then guess what? We kind of get what we get. God is under. Let me say this, and let me let me clarify. It. God is under no obligation to bless your mess. He's under no obligation to bless your mess. Now, let me, let me give you the good news in that. God is gracious. God is still gracious. 
And even though we, 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 uh, we have messy situations of our own doing, the grace of God. Yeah, we need to just pause and just thank God for his grace. Thank God for his grace because we presented him messy situations. And we're like, Lord, bless this mess. He's under, he's under no obligation to bless it. But his grace shows up. And we need to thank God for his grace. So we need to follow God's plan even when it doesn't seem logical. Again, God said don't attack them straight on. Don't attack them straight on. But instead circle around behind and attack them attack the, them near the poplar trees. And then get, look at this. Verse 24 says, when you hear the sound like marching feet in the tops of the poplar trees, be on alert. That will be the signal that God, that the Lord is moving ahead of you to strike down the Philistine army. I'll be honest. I don't know what that looks like. I don't know. I don't know what the, what the, what the sign is, but God clearly gave David a sign. He said, when you hear the sound like marching feet, that could be like the, that could be the rustling of the trees, you know, the wind, you know, uh, uh, cause the, the, the trees to to to. It, it could be something like that. But he says, when you hear the sound like marching feet on the tops of the poplar trees, be on the alert. That will be the signal that God is moving ahead of you to strike down the field of army. Look at what God did when we acknowledge Him. We trust in the Lord with all our heart. We don't lean on our own understanding. We acknowledge him. Look at what God would do. God can supernaturally show up and fight the battle on your behalf. That's what can happen. We just got to, we just got to, we got we got to live. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. We got to live it. But God can show up on your, on your behalf. And, and the Bible says that God supernaturally allowed uh, David to have this this signal, and he says, once you hear once you hear the sign, once you see that, once you hear it, then I want you to, to 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 move because that's the signal, that's the sign that God, the Lord, is moving ahead of you to strike down the Philistine army. And then he snapped into action when he heard the signal. When the Holy Spirit tells us what to do, it may not be logical, but snap to it. Do it. Do what he's do what he's called, what he's put into your heart to do. You have to follow God's plan, even though it may not seem logical. Verse 25 says this. So David did what the Lord commanded. And he struck down the Philistines all the way from Gibeon to Giza. He received the victory. He received the victory when he did, he carried out God's plan. And he did it God's way. We, we can't do it our way. We can't do it our way. If David would have did anything but what God said, he would have not received the victory. It's the same thing for us. If we do it any way other than the way God says, you will not receive the victory. I don't care who you are. I, I, don't, I don't care. You, it, it doesn't matter. Ultimately, you will lose. It may even look like you're winning right now. The Bible talks about that. I think it's in Psalms the 30. Seven Psalms. Don't quote me on that. But it talks about fret not when when you see evildoers prosper. It may look like they're winning. It may look like that that nothing's happening. I can live any old kind of way. I can do anything that I want to do. It may be frustrating because you see. Somebody that you know are tap dancing with the devil. You know it. You see it. And here you are trying to do right. 
And you see them prospering. And the temptation is, the trap is, that you know what, this God stuff don't work. You can look at look at the fun that they're having. And you you you're thinking in yourself that, hey, I don't have to listen to what mom and dad said. I can do my thing. I can do my thing and 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 everything is gonna it's gonna work out. Be, be, because because it has it, it this is bad English, but we say to ourselves, it has it not worked out. So I can just stay on the path. I can just do my own thing. I, you get what you get. You get what you get. David trusted God and he received the victory. We can trust God and receive the victory. And even when it seems like our enemies are winning, you ultimately, you ultimately as a child of God, as a believer, you ultimately get the victory. I want that to become real in our lives. I really do. And, and, it's, and it's difficult because of the, the, the things that we have to deal with and the problems and the challenges that we have to deal with. But what I just said, I really want that to become real in our lives. I want us to really understand that ultimately, ultimately, we get the victory. You know what that means? Even if I die, I get the victory. You know why? Because the second life is gone from this body, the Bible teaches that 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 absence with you know from the body is, is is presence with the Lord. That's what happens. We ultimately get the victory, and 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 everything that happens in this life, it will not compare to the glory that you will receive when you ultimately stand before Jesus. And fellowship, have 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 uh, fellowship with God forever. It won't compare. It, won't, it just it just won't compare. I want us to I want us to understand that to get that. So David, because of his obedience, he got he got the victory. God is able to give us the victory. He's able to give us the victory too. No matter what we're facing, God can calm the raging sea. He can see us safely through the storm. He can move mountains. Or he can give you the strength to climb up. He can, he can open doors that need to be opened. And he can close the doors that, that, that keep you safe from harm. He can do all of that for us. He can rescue you. He can rescue us. He, he's, 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 he's actively, think about that, he's actively wanting to engage, seeking to engage and intertwine in our lives. He's actively pursuing us. So that's what happens when we live out Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. So what I want us to do as we close, I want us to do, I want to say everybody stand. It's on the screen. <coughs> Let's just read this verse together. Let's read this verse together. Because this is this is this is how we must live. This is how we will live. Ready? Let's go. Trust in the Lord, Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. That's a promise. That is a promise. And I want us to live by that. And to, to, to make sure that we're trusting in him 
Throw out all your, your knowledge. Depend on him. Lean on, not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him. And he promises to direct your path. Amen. Amen. Father God, we just thank you. We praise you for the opportunity that you've given us to hear your word and to understand your God that you're working behind the scenes sometimes because sometimes just be honest to God we it's, it's tough to track you to, to to track what you're doing but it's during those times that God I, I pray that you would help us to remember to trust you even when we can't track you even when we don't know what's going on even when you're working behind the scenes Father help us to to continue to remember that you are our way maker that you love us and that you're working all the things out for our good and for your glory. Now, dear Heavenly Father, as we leave this place but never your presence, I pray that you would go with us and that you would be with us. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Everybody say amen. 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 amen.